What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Talking Halos. I'm your host today, Jared Timms, and I am joined alongside my co-host, my partners in crime, Brock Davis and Nate Green. Fellas, boys, Nate, I feel like you're going to be that guy today, so I don't even want to talk to you at the moment. Brock, Somebody's got to be that guy. Brock, how you doing? Dude, I don't know if I'm a much better guy to ask than Nate right now. I'm, I'm... <laughs> I know the listeners that know me know that I'm generally kind of somewhere in the middle as far as negative Nate. And I don't want to, I I feel like you're generally pretty positive. So I guess I'm somewhere in the middle, but right now, I I don't even know what to say. Like, I I don't even know what to talk about. Nate's not even negative Nate. We got plenty to talk about, Uh, but Nate's not even negative Nate. He's uh, what do we, what do we call you Nate? Accurate, not accurate. Well, I, yeah, I mean that that's pretty fair. I agree. It's fine. Why did uh, you have to go there? I, I, right, they are it, who they thought they are who we thought they were. It's fine. But, anyway, that's fine. We're putting it on a shirt for you. That's yeah. So accurate. I, I I think I think that's actually true. How about accurate and then in parentheses small beneath it you could put negative and then name. Absolutely not. <laughs> and it's not getting any t-shirts. So, all right, guys. Well, that being said. Thank you for watching, listening to this podcast here at Talking Halos. You can follow us on all our social medias, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Follow myself on Twitter, Jedder underscore Tim's Nate at Nate Green 34 Brock at BDROX8. We're looking for writers, as always. Go ahead and check us out at TalkingHalos.com. Somebody get... messages on Facebook. Did you get back to them? I did not. I got an email as well. So anybody anybody who wants in, I I, I got to email that person back. I will email you back. Um, just got sent to Derek, and Derek forwarded it to me, so I will. Um, and then Facebook, I... Dude, I work on Facebook. Like I literally, my job is on Facebook and I have 8,000 notifications. So I do not see very much on Facebook, but back to, back to baseball here. Don't have a lot of good to talk about. And congratulations, Zach Neto for yes. Zach neto it up yeah. um, and, uh, and getting promoted and the whole family there, Maggie, Joaquin, our, our Herto, and everybody involved there love love everybody there um to be really sweet to see him uh continue to grow as a player we already talked about that though we want to get on to I, I don't even know kind of where to start we're gonna have to make this by the way Pete, is that mango mango is good um I'm at peach mango baby peach mango. no sugar added oh, no. peach mango hey, body armor sponsor me <laughs> um let's let's talk about it because we do have a couple things to bring up uh n- number one is is Matt Thice. I do want to kind of bring him up just to start us off. Rough game. We've all been there, though. Rough game. We've all been yep. there. I know I was throwing out a lot of stats. Um, he's given up back to that game, not including Sunday's game, today's game. Um, he gave up 25 runs and three starts. Matt Thice did. As a catcher, for what it is, I don't care what it is. He hasn't caught Otani. He hasn't caught Sandoval. Good, though, because I don't want him catching those guys. Um He's given up 25 runs and three starts. Ohapi had given up 37 and 11 starts. Do you guys take anything into this? Nate, I'll start with you. Catcher's ERA, I mean, a pitchers, little bit. I wasn't, I was, a, I was not, I'm no. sorry to catch off. I was not a big fan of, of certain catchers catching me if they didn't catch me well. I think that's kind of where we're sitting yeah. with. with. Uh, absolutely. I, I take a little bit of it into account. I, to be fair to Thais, though, he has caught not our best pitchers. So, like, it, it is like, Oh, Hoppy's got four starts, five starts, six starts with uh, Otani and Sandoval now. And it's like, okay, those starts have been very, very good. There have been no blowups. Like, even when Oh, Hoppy has caught in some some of the other guys, there's still been blowups. So, like, it's it's a little unfair to Thice, but somebody's got to figure those guys out. So, I, I do take a little bit of it because he is calling pitches slash – coming up with the game plan combined. I know the, the starting pitcher and, and then get together, come up with the game plan, things like that. So I take a little bit of it into account. Um, so, yeah, it, it's an interesting stat, but I don't think it tells the whole story. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, he had the Luis Castillo start, which in Seattle, which wasn't great. Uh, he had the two catcher interference game. And then he actually caught a win where they scored the uh, – I forgot who it was. Uh, somebody scored five runs. Um, the Blue Jays scored five runs. I think it was a nine-five win. They're at home, um, so he did catch that game, but still five runs, eleven runs, and then the two catcher interference games where he gave up nine runs. There, uh, it's a lot, a lot of runs. I guess it's twenty-four now that I'm doing math in my head. Um, it's, it's a lot of a lot of run. No, it's twenty-five. A lot, a lot. I was going to say. There. I thought you said eight point three was the number. Yeah, eight point three. 
25 runs in three games. That's that's tough. I don't know what to take. Uh, you know, catching catchers inter or not catchers interference, catchers ERA wise. Um, three starts, you know, it is what it is, but just watching him, he's not somebody that I would want to catch me. I mean, I don't throw very hard, but it's just one of those guys that he just doesn't look very comfortable back there. Brock, I don't know if you have anything to to bring up with this side of stuff, but. Well, literally the last thing you said was just kind of the take that I was going to have on it. Like you look at Ohapi behind the plate and then you compare it to dice behind the plate. He just doesn't look like a catcher. Just the way he goes about his business. Like I, I was never a catcher. I was more of like a middle infielder and pitcher. So I'm not super knowledgeable when it comes to, you know, positioning as a catcher, but you catch on to a lot of things of how things are supposed to be done just by watching good catchers do what they do. And I feel like Ohapi, even though he's so new, he looks so, so natural and, and comfortable back there. And then you see thighs back there and it just, it just doesn't look good. Like it purely just doesn't look good. And then when the catcher interference stuff happens, it's kind of like, even though it was so frustrating and so deflating, it was kind of like a, yeah, it makes sense. Like it, it, it really didn't catch me off guard. If that makes sense. Like he looks a lot more comfortable ish at first base than he does behind the plate. He just doesn't, I don't necessarily want to get rid of him. It was very, very, very frustrating. I just Stassi and Ohapi look comfortable behind the plate. And like Nate was touching on, it's so important as a pitcher even not even including the pitch calling and the game planning stuff, because that is obviously super de detrimental and can have a huge effect on the game to have the comfortability of the pitcher being like, okay, like most pitchers don't even think about catcher interference stuff, but then now they're thinking about that. Like it's dumb, first of all, but then they don't want to have to worry about putting a splitter in the dirt or throwing a slider away. They don't want to have to worry about those things that, that those things really help a pitcher command the count when they can, make those kind of pitches and, and get ahead or get players to chase without worrying about people being on base and getting up a base because their catcher can't defend their pitches. So it does play a huge role. So just too bad. Honestly, it sucks. Yeah. Cause I want to, I want to see Matt Thice be good first round pick and everything like that caught in college. Um, I, I just don't think that he is caught enough you know you you threw him back there I think last year he started catching again maybe the year before that actually in 2020 it was it was in at Long Beach State he caught, started catching a little bit um regardless though he doesn't have the Stassi time he doesn't have the Logan O'Hoppy time uh back behind the dish to to do that and that kind of brings us in it kind of full you know the Matt Thice saga in a sense I don't know what to call it but Matt Thice kind of brings us full circle though because with those two catchers interference Ryan Tapera's inning gets extended to 33 pitches and two thirds of an inning, I think is what you said. Correct there, Nate. Yes. And we see him get hurt with some shoulder issue. Not saying that's on Matt Thice by any means. You never want to see that or, or blame that, but that is a, that is things that should not happen. You know, <laughs> like that, those extra 33 pitches should not have happened. And again, not on Thice by any means. It, it's something that's going to happen. We've all been there before and we played games where, you know, even if it's not baseball, you know, that it's just not your day. And unfortunately, you know, it was unlucky that two catchers interference happened. Um, he could have probably made an adjustment after the first one, definitely made an adjustment after the second one. Um, but again, we saw Ryan Tapera get hurt because of the extended inning, which really good segment into my next question here. And Nate, I know you already yelled at me. It was the first thing you talked about when we got on the phone was why was Ryan Tapera in for 33 pitches and two thirds of an inning? Um and I think we've seen that a lot, not the Tapera going into 33 pitches, but the bad decision-making. And this is continuing to be a, a a subject to talk about. You know, we we talked about it with Joe Madden. That was our biggest thing with Joe Madden was bullpen usage and how they were, you know, how Madden was using the bullpen in certain situations. We are, we're got to talk about it again, because that seems like it has been, kind of the downfall of the angels so far is just bad decision making all around mental mistakes and if it's if it's not a mental mistake on the field it's been a mental mistake in the clubhouse or walking back to the clubhouse or you know with perry whoever is putting in some certain guys whatever who's members is making the game plan whether it's alex Taman, uh assistant gm perry menacing gm phil nevin you know, those type of guys, whoever it is, is it just doesn't seem like guys are are making the correct decisions. And I think we're seeing it go over on the field as well. You know, we saw the three error game. Um, we saw the game today on Sunday where two guys get picked off. 
Uh, Brett Phillips, who is normally a very good base runner, you know, just mental mistakes left and right. And unfortunately, there isn't a stat, you know, that's really ever going to show mental mistakes. But man, if there was, the Angels would 100% be leading the league in it right now. And that's really been the downfall. And Nate, I know I'll, I'll let you kind of take it away because I know you got some some negative Nate to do right now. So go ahead and not negative Nate, but you know what I mean. Well, first of all, before we move on to the Tapera thing, I do want to back up Thice just a little bit here. The Red Sox guy had a catcher's interference on Otani as well. So it could be a little bit of where the umpire was at that day. I, I I'm not going to say like i've never the seen hole. three in one game. the holes are never. farther the holes are farther up at in boston is that what you're telling me <laughs> I, they I don't chalk, know they chalk the field wrong I, i'm not saying they chalk the field wrong but like have you ever seen three in one game like i haven't seen you barely see you, one in a game you're you're lucky to see one so yeah. you know it, it could be umpire stuff but Moving on, the Tapera thing is frustrating. You leave the guy out there to die. 33 pitches is unacceptable. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know that's not who he is. That's not what you signed him to do. You you know he's a 15 to 20 pitch guy max. And yes, you, you needed to get him through the inning because it was righties and stuff like that. But like, come on, you, you got to be better than that. 33 pitches is it's just outrageous for Ryan Tapera. That's not what you pay him to do. I mean, he's not really doing what you pay him to do anyway, but still. Um, it, you have it's left, just you have lefties that are good against righties. I mean, you had Matt Moore hypothetically. I don't know if he was available or not. Matt, Matt Moore threw early and he early? threw two innings, and then they went he, to he a threw, yeah, and then they threw, went to pair. Yeah. Um, but but still, like they were so worried about like Tucker Davidson could have come in and got a righty out. Like I'm not a big Tucker Davidson fan. He he was the one who ended up coming in to get Devers out to get out of the inning, but it was just like. Have some feel, man. 33 pitches for a reliever that really doesn't go deep into games. Usually, like, he's been throwing a third of an inning and getting out of the inning and hasn't been going back out there. So, like, why are we going to extend him for 33 pitches is just outrageous. Um, Nevin has been terrible with the bullpen. And I think it's really, really funny because we we killed Joe Madden for bullpen. And now we're killing Phil Nevin. Are we sure it's really Joe Madden? Like, are we yeah, sure it's you know it's you know it's Joe Madden because because well, of his yeah. Cubs days. Yes, but like, are we are we sure it's really Joe Madden's fault? The Angels bullpen was bad. Like, could it be other people? Um, I, I'm not even gonna say who it could be, but like, could it be other people that that really were making it difficult on Joe? And maybe maybe Joe had some other issues that he wanted to go to. Like, hey, I want to go this way. Um, so yeah, maybe Joe had some guys that he wanted to go to and the, whoever it was, the higher up said, no, this is who we're going with. And that, and that's what they did. So, um, yeah, it, it's been, it's been really brutal to watch the way the bullpen has been managed. And I think just everything in general, like it's, re- it, it really was confusing for me to give Nevin the, the one year extension. I, I don't know how you say you want to win a world series when you're giving a manager, a job who has never really managed before successfully anywhere. Like you, you look at the teams that are winning world series. It's teams that have guys that have been there and done that. It's not guys that are, Oh, Hey, first year on the job, you're probably going to do a good job. So knowing that this is the last year of Shohei Otani on his contract, we, we don't even know if, you know, who knows what's going to happen with him, but you're going to go get a guy who really hasn't managed. And then he managed a team and they weren't even successful. Like, yeah, they weren't as bad as they were on that 15 game losing streak or what was it? 13, 17, who knows anymore? Yeah. Um, they weren't that bad, but it wasn't like he he made them dramatically better where it was like, oh my gosh, this team's a playoff team. Like, no, they were the same team. They just didn't lose all the games in a row. So, and they didn't win all the games in a row either. They just kind of won a couple, lost a couple. So it, it was a head scratcher for me then. It's still a head scratcher for me now. Um, I, I just think there's total incompetence from all the way up. Yeah, and, and just look, looking at stats, by the way, since 2020, uh, he has, Brian Tapera has thrown more than 30 pitches twice. Two of them have come, or three times, should I say. Twi- two of them have come with the Angels. Uh, one of them came in 2020. So he's not a guy that throws more than more than 30 pitches. And in fact, in his career, he's 
thrown more than 30 pitches once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times in his career. And he's had a couple, he had a couple in times in Toronto in 2017 where he threw 45 pitches. So he's not a guy that throws more than 30 pitches. I mean, he's thrown 29 quite a few times, 25 plus he's thrown quite a few times. But once you get above that 30 pitch mark for somebody who doesn't throw 30 plus pitches, it's a, that's an issue. So uh, 33 pitches is the most that he's thrown since 2017. You know, he threw 20, I take it back 2020. He threw 33 pitches against Cincinnati for the Cubs in 2020 in the COVID year. And then before that, it, you know, 2017 was when he threw the 40 plus pitches. So, yeah, I mean, you're, you're onto something there for sure. It's, it's, um, it's not, not something that you want Ryan to to do. That was a lot of pitches and he was, he would continue to throw pitches, you know, if he didn't get hurt in the end. I think he was, no, I think he was done no matter what there. Cause Devers was on deck. Uh, Davidson was already warming up. So I think that was his last batter, no matter what, but it just happened to be that he got hurt and then it, he was taken out. So that's fair. That's that's fair. So I'll I'll kind of you know shift the subject here. We're talking about Nevin. We're talking about Perry. Brock, I'll ask you this before we let everybody go here. Perry, Nevin, Taman, the whole you know everybody, they in the hot seat right now. Oh, for sure. I feel like we just are in this huge circle of Angels' life where it's hope, Insane. and then poor decisions, and then frustration, and then losing, and then potential hope and then hope and it's just this huge circle that we keep going around and I think over this last couple years it's reached its peak the highest I've ever seen it so I definitely think they are in the hot seat I think I I 100% agree with Nate I don't understand the Nevin decision at all I understand obviously last year because it was kind of a they didn't really have a choice but the extension I don't I don't get it all like Nevin is like a is like a build-up team manager like the A's like if he was in the A's organization it would be like oh cool Phil Nevin like he's smart like whatever we could try to figure it out but not for this type of team this is not exactly what Nate's saying if you are trying truly to get to the playoffs make a deep run and have decisions that get you there Nevin was not the move and is not going to be the move and that's the part that kind of sucks at the end of the day is are these bullpen decisions like Nate was touching on are they really Nevin's are they really Nevins? I don't know. I don't think any of us know. I don't have an insider, but I, I, I don't know. And I don't know who knows. So that's kind of the frustrating part is it's like, yes, we're going to blame Nevin. We're going to potentially blame Perry, but who knows how high up these decisions go? You know, we really, we really don't. So Either way, regardless of who it is, the Angels are mismanaging the bullpen and those decisions significantly, and it it's it sucks to see Tepera get hurt last night because of that. I don't think it's Thice's fault. Like obviously, Thice is technically the one that extended the inning, but Thice didn't extend Tepera. Does that make sense? Like, and there's no guarantees that Tepera gets those two guys out either. Like, yeah, exactly. He could have yeah. easily given up hits to those guys or or thrown more pitches and walked the guys. Like it. It's hard to blame Thice for that. Yeah, like Thice extended the inning, but he did not extend to Para. Like we have no idea what could have happened to Depera. Um, and it was the Angels that did not pull him when he should have been pulled. He should have been pulled after the Yu, uh, the Yu Chang single. In my opinion, that's when he should have been pulled. Um, but yeah, it's just tough. I honestly, I'm like, this is the first time in a long time on this show that I've been kind of speechless. And it's just like, I just hope that at least I see a little bit of a glimmer of light by next Sunday when I come on, you know, it's, it's just tough. It's tough. The circle of angels life sucks. Sometimes it really does. Yep. Um, you know, we, we simmer down expectations. That's, that's what we want to try to do here. So um, I was going to go to Nate, Nate, you, you're back there. You froze there for a second. Give, are they on the hot seat? I think the answer is yes. The same, right? Just real, real yes, quick. Sir. Yes. Absolutely. And Absolutely. That, that, that thing is, that, that thing is as hot as it possibly can be. I mean, it, it, the panic button with Neto, it, it brings back the Adele uh, memories from Epler. Um, yeah, and and honestly, like with the Phil Nevin thing, going back to that, yes, it's bullpen management. He's also writing out the lineup card. The lineup has not been good, has not been consistent. He also was the infield coach last year. So he probably has some say in how the infield works. The infield has not been good. Brandon Jury is an absolute joke at second base. Absolute joke. Um, Brandon Jury, I, I still think Brandon Jury should have picked the ball that Rendon threw 
Um, yes, probably should have hit him in the chest, but uh, yeah, we, we are not playing clean baseball. And I think that starts with the guy who was in charge of defense last year. I think it starts with uh, the manager because he's the one who holds the expectations of what to expect from everyone. And yeah, it's not fair to, to Phil to be like, Hey, this is all your fault. But like when you accept a manager job of a team that has world series aspirations, you, you're going to wear a lot of the blame. Just look at Dave Roberts. That dude wins 106 games every year and he wears so much blame every single year. So yeah, it's not really fair to criticize Phil, but like this is, something has to change because the angels got to be better defensively. They got to be better with making uh, moves in the bullpen. They Wasn't it Jake with... lamb that didn't make that day or am I true? No, it, was, it was jury at first. Yeah. Jury, jury started that day. Oh, why did I think it was lamb? It, it was just. Regardless probably needs to be picked. And I totally, I get that. And, and for me, for me, before I let everybody go, it's, it's mental 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 and it starts at the top i don't know you know you can't put blame on anybody it's not the front office you know at this point it's not it it's not phil you know the the players are playing so the players need to get out of their own heads players need to not the players need to check in mentally for nine innings the angels need to play nine strong innings and and they going back to we we mentioned it we mentioned it last week at some point i didn't think that this was things that we needed to bring up with a major league ball club. Yeah. You know, like we, we shouldn't have to bring up this side of things with a major league ball club. Now guys, if we were coaching a, a T ball team, team. a high school team, sure. Even some college teams. Sure. You know, you have those guys, but we're talking about major leaguers right here that cannot play a nine inning game right now. It really is that way. And you look at the stats, it's super true. The pitchers start, the starting pitchers start getting to the end of their end of their day and cannot finish off games. I mean, we saw it with Reed Detmers in the grand slam, you know, and, and if that's, if it's, if it's not the starting pitchers, it's the hitters, the hitters can't hit late into games. They all of a sudden just fall apart. I mean, they, they have a 56 WRC plus after the seventh inning, after one through six innings, one through six, they have a one thirty something WRC plus. So it they need to learn how to play and it starts with everybody like everybody needs to learn how to play a nine inning game right now they're not playing nine inning games once they figure that out i i don't know what to make of this ball club right now this ball club is not a playoff team you know like congratulations you're at seven and eight but you're at seven and eight like we can play the what if game all day like they should be should only have three losses we should be talking about them being one of the best teams in baseball right now but mental mistakes are absolutely killing them and it is a damn shame that it that it's happening it shouldn't happen so before you before you go into your outro outro i'm going to say what i said to you before we started the show for the listeners go ahead, take it do it that'll be all right the outro. astros are also seven and eight okay first thing I'm, 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 this is your light at the end of the tunnel this episode because i was pretty negative this episode too <laughs> so once again the astros are seven and eight and the 2019 Nationals that won the World Series started the season 19 and 31. Braves, so, Braves a couple of years ago. Yeah, we're they did not start well team. at all. We're not even a playoff team. So, and the 2002 World Series Angels were also a wild card team. So it's like just, I know, I know it's dark. I'm dark right now, but hey, we, we never know. We're 15 games in. We'll see Hold our breath and see what happens. The Houston Astros are also missing three of their top players. Hey, 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 Angels hey. missing Ryan Tapera. Hey. Angels missing I didn't, oh, I didn't no, want to give Ryan them real Tepera. perspective. That, I wanted right. to give them fake perspective. perspective. McCullers. All right, all right, all right. With all that being said, thank you so much for listening and watching this podcast. Thank you for tuning into Angels Baseball. I know it's tough. Trust me. I know it's tough. Dude, we've been doing this. I've been covering the Angels now for almost 10 years. Trust me. We're missing Stassi, no. though, so People, it's kind of even – People ask me all the time, like, why, why are you positive? Because I've been doing this for 10 freaking years and I know what the angels are. And it, it's, it's not even, it's not even a letdown, you know, at this point, it's like, I, I, I you just wake up and you, you kind of expect it. You have your expectations set low and that's just kind of how it is. And I, and I hope they start playing better because this team is a lot better than what they've been playing. Got to get out of their freaking heads. Bill Nevin needs to get these guys 
and Shea Perry needs to get these guys to play nine inning games. That's how, that's how it is. So, guys, thank you so much for listening and watching this podcast. You can follow us on all our social medias, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Again, if you want to write for us, shoot us some messages. I will get back to everybody. I promise you, because we're looking for writers. I want I want to keep growing, talking halos. So, guys, thank you so much for listening and watching. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.